गुड मॉर्निंग आई एम जमशेद बेग नोन एज जे बी दी एडवेंचर अ सोलो ट्रेवलर एंड अ ट्रेवल ब्लॉगर फ्रॉम मैनचेस्टर इंग्लैंड विद ओवर थर्टी ईयर्स ऑफ ट्रेवलिंग एक्सपीरियंस इन टूडेज एडवेंचर वी आर गोइंग टू विजिट द ओल्ड टाउन ऑफ एडम्ब्रा कैपिटल सिटी ऑफ स्कॉटलैंड एंड रिवील टेन थाउजेंड ईयर्स ऑफ हिस्ट्री ऑफ दिस ब्यूटिफुल हिस्टोरिक सिटी By the first half of the 18th century Edinburgh was described as one of Europe's most densely populated overcrowded and unsanitary town. Visitors were struck by the fact that the social classes shared the same urban space even inhabiting the same tenement buildings. Although here a form of social segregation did prevail whereby shopkeepers and tradesmen tended to occupy the cheaper to rent cellars and garrets while the more well to do professional class occupied the more expensive middle stories During the Jacobite rising of 1745 Edinburgh was briefly occupied by the Jacobite Highland army before its march into England After its eventual defeat at Culloden there followed a period of reprisals and pacifications largely directed at the rebellious clans In Edinburgh the town council keen to emulate London by initiating city improvements and expansions to the north of the castle reaffirmed its belief in the union and loyalty to the Hanoverian monarch George III by its choice of names for the streets of the new town for example Rose Street and Thistle Street and for the royal family George Street Queen Street Hanover Street Frederick Street and Princess Street in honor of George's two sons. In the second half of the century the city was at the heart of the Scottish Enlightenment when thinkers like David Hume, Adam Smith, James Houghton and Joseph Black were familiar figures in its streets. Edinburgh became a major intellectual center earning its nickname Athens of North because of its many new classical buildings and reputation for learning recalling ancient Athens. In the 18th century novel The Expedition of Humphrey Clinker by Tobias Smollett one character describes Edinburgh as the hotbed of genius Edinburgh was also a major center for the Scottish book trade the highly successful London bookseller Andrew Miller was apprenticed there to James Macwine From the 1770 onward the professional and business classes gradually deserted the old town in favor of the more elegant one family residences of the new town a migration that changed the city's social character According to the foremost historian of this development unity of social feeling was one of the most valuable heritages of old Edinburgh and its disappearance was widely and properly lamented despite an enduring myth to the contrary edinburgh became an industrial center with its traditional industries of printing brewing and distilling continuing to grow in the 19th century and joined by new industries such as rubber works and engineering works and others
by 1821 Edinburgh had been overtaken by Glasgow as Scotland's largest city. The city centre between Princess Street and George Street became a major commercial and shopping district, a development partly simulated by the arrival of railways in the 1840s. The old town became an increasingly dilapidated, overcrowded slum with high mortality rate. Improvements carried out under the Lord Provost William Chambers in the 1860s began the transformation of the area into the predominantly Victorian old town scene today. More improvements followed in the early 20th century as a result of the work of Patrick Gadditz, but relative economic stagnation during the two world wars and beyond saw the old town deteriorates further before major slum clearance in the 1960s and 1970s began to reverse the process. University building developments which transformed the George Square and Potter Row areas proved highly controversial. Since the 1990s, a new financial district, including the Edinburgh International Conference Centre, has grown mainly on demolished railway property to the west of the castle, stretching into Fontaine Bridge, a rundown 19th century industrial suburb, which has undergone radical change since the 1980s with the demise of industrial and brewery premises. This ongoing development has enabled Edinburgh to maintain its place as United Kingdom's second largest financial and administrative centre after London. Financial services now account for a third of all commercial office space in the city. The development of Edinburgh's Park, a new business and technology park covering 38 acres 6 kilometers west of the city centre, has also contributed to the district's council's strategy for the city's major economic regeneration. In 1998, the Scottish Act, which came into force the following year, established a devolved Scottish Parliament and Scottish executive renamed the Scottish government since September 2007. Both based in Edinburgh, they are responsible for governing Scotland while reserved matters such as defence, foreign affairs and some element of income tax remain in the responsibility of the Parliament of the United Kingdom in London. Apart from being the historic and most beautiful city of Scotland, Edinburgh also attracts millions of tourists every year because of some interesting facts about the city, such as the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. The Edinburgh Fringe Festival is the largest arts festival in the world. One of the other attractions for tourists in Edinburgh city is the Harry Potter movies. The Harry Potter movies were filmed in Edinburgh. Over 75% of the city's buildings are listed. More than 4,500 buildings make the list making Edinburgh home to the most listed sites in the UK after London. Do you know, Edinburgh wasn't always the capital of Scotland. Scone was in fact Scotland's very first capital, not the sweet treat, the town in Perth and Kinross. It was the residence and site of inauguration of Scottish kings and queens for over 700 years and the Scottish Parliament was based there from its formation in 1235. Edinburgh isn't even the second. Dunfermline 
inwardness and sterling have also all been considered a capital of Scotland. The throne was moved to Edinburgh Castle after King James I of Scotland was brutally murdered by assassins in Perth in 1437. It's thought that it was moved to Edinburgh for safety purpose as there were a lot of attempts overthrow those in power so having a defensive location was very important. Unicorns may not be real but that didn't stop Scotland choosing the mythical creature as its national animal. The country is famed for its myths and legends so if one place had to have a unicorn it had to be Scotland. As of 2018, Edinburgh University ranked 22nd in the best universities in the world and the 6th best university in Europe. The university has many historical buildings based in the medieval old town. City actually owes the beauty of its landscape to the most recent ice age. The obvious tail feature from Castle Rock to Holyrood, the edge of the Royal Mile and the deep valleys on either side of the Cowgate and Norlock were all found thanks to the miles of moving ice sheets that shaped them. The most famous street in Edinburgh, the Royal Mile is not not actually a mile. It stretches 1 mile and 1.7 yards, so almost. The world's one and only knighted penguin lives at Edinburgh Zoo. Exploring the world and sharing these exciting adventures with you is a passion of mine. Be a part of my passion by hitting the like button and share these videos as much as possible. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any future adventures. Take only memories, leave only footprints. See you next week with a new adventure. Ciao.